Hello everyone, I'm Shubh and you're watching F1 Error Analysis. For those of you who are new to my channel, a quick background check. I work with the Red Bull Racing Team for the 2021 and the 2022 season as a student placement aerodynamicist. And this has given me some insights into the world of F1 aerodynamics. And my objective with this aero analysis series is to give you those insights. So let's dive into it then. In this video, we're going to talk about the Aston Martin Canyon side pod, which is sort of a hybrid between the Ferrari Canyon side pod and the Aston Martin's downwashing Canyon concept. Come together forms this year's Aston Martin Racing Canyon side pod concept, which is quite neat and also artistically really nice. Um, a lot of people on the internet say that this is used to deliver high energy flow to the rear end of the car so that the beam wing and the diffuser can work more effectively. But how does that happen? Let's try and understand this in this video. So let us try and understand what the white side pods actually do. So the white side pod along with an aggressive undercut lends up creating a high pressure region underneath that allows you to keep the tire wake as outboard as possible. And what you really want to do is push this tire wake as outboard as possible so that it does not get uh, clocked in inwards and goes to the rear end of the car. Because if it does, then your rear end is not as effective and your diffuser expansion is not as effective because it has low energy air, right? So the side pod shape itself by keeping it wide acts like a physical barrier. And then you get the hum because you want to scoop this section out. And there are some radius rules that you need to um, attend to in this section. So you have this scoop here which is a result of you wanting to you wanting to get some of the volume out of here uh, and because you have to comply with some of the regulations and you want to keep this scoop as high as possible because you want to you're fundamentally treating the upper the front tire upper wake in this case right so the higher it is the better it is now we come to the question why the scoop right and i think there are uh, obviously the the objective of the scoop is to take the clean energy flow that comes into in through this section of the car and deliver it to all the way to the rear end of the car but then why have a scoop and why not have like a plain section i think there are two reasons for it because scooping in itself i think allows you to have more mass flow rate that gets delivered to the rear end of the car because you are removing volume out of the system which would otherwise be flat um, and in addition to that Scooping in itself creates, allows you to create this hum, which is a nice way of, it's just like an end plate, which gives you like an end plate effect, um, which is very neat, I think, because in this case, you are able to kind of differentiate the air into two parts. Like you have clean energy air coming from this section of the car, and then you're differentiating it physically with, with the help of the scoop from the air which is mixed with the tire wake out here you know so i think that way the scoop really helps to explain what this really means imagine this is the beam wing right um imagine this airfoil is a section of the beam wing and let us draw a section of the diffuser let's draw it a little bit lower it should be a little bit in front and what the diffuser does is normally it's going through an expansion right so the more you can expand a diffuser, the more you can accelerate the flow underneath the floor and the more pressure drop you can get into the kink of the diffuser, which is the point at which you start expanding. And this is very important because that's where locally the pressure is the lowest. Um, now you can say, you can argue that you, can, you could simply add more angle of attack to this by rotating it and try and get more expansion. And yes, but that would be very draggy and that would be an inefficient way of expanding more. I think a lot of teams tried to do that last year and what they landed up realizing is that the car actually becomes very draggy compared to teams who were smart uh, and, you know, got away by expanding the diffuser much more efficiently. So uh, let's say that the option of just cranking up your beam wing is an, a draggier option, right? then how are you still able to expand a diffuser? So if you land up delivering 
clean energy air or higher energy air across this airfoil section. Let's say here, you get a larger static pressure drop, right? What will end up happening is because you have a larger static pressure drop here on the airfoil section, you'll end up getting more expansion because this flow wants to go from, remember this is high pressure and this is low pressure. So you are expanding through a pressure difference by dropping the pressure even more onto the beam bay. And this is fundamentally the reason you want more energy onto the beam wing because then it is able to create more suction and that suction generates a pressure field which results into more expansion. Now that's really cool but F1 is more complicated than that because we use a lot of vortex systems to drive expansion. So you can, so if you see the image on the right hand side, you will see that this flow comes all the way down here, right? And it has to go through a lot of um, winglets and a lot of other things which drive like smaller structures around it. So this is basically the BDR rear wings and the edges of the beam wing, the edges of the diffuser and all these small shedding edges land up generating a vortex which land up normally expanding the flow, right? So you have this small vortex structures on both end sides which are normally in a direction so that it expands the flow and gives you more lateral expansion of the flow. Now imagine if all these shedding edges get higher energy air, which basically means that the vortex systems that are driven through all of the shedding edges would be even more powerful and you would have even more powerful lateral expansion. So having higher energy air to the rear end of the car gives you more lateral expansion through stronger vortex structures i think and then gives you more conventional vertical expansion because of um, how it interacts with the beam wing another cool thing you can notice that aston martin i think are really convinced with this concept because of the amount of care they've taken to kind of minimize the losses and extract the maximum from this concept because you can see that there are no cooling vents unlike both Ferrari and uh, Alpine in this canyon section. And then the canyon section starts in washing at the rear end, which would ensure like you end up creating local inwash, right? Something like because of this converging section on, on the rear end, you'll end up creating local inwash, which kind of lands up suppressing all the losses that would come from the bodywork itself. Uh, so you have, you minimize the losses and you feed high energy air as much as possible to the rear end so that you can improve the lateral expansion and the vertical expansion. The lateral expansion via stronger vortex structures and vertical expansion via the interaction with the beam wing pressure.